When most people think of Bruce Lee, they think of the blinding speed, the fast hands, and his famous one inch punch. I mean, Bruce Lee is the guy who was giving out sweet chin music in the movies decades before Shawn Michaels even stepped into a wrestling ring. So it's really unfortunate that people have no idea that Bruce actually studied grappling before he was learning how to kick people in the face. I mean, if you believe what Joe Rogan has been saying for at least a decade, Bruce Lee never knew anything about grappling until he met Judo Jean LaBelle on the set of The Green Hornet in 1965 or 1966. You know, Jean was like, he's like the guy that taught Bruce Lee about grappling. You know, Bruce Lee, back in the day, thought you could just karate kick everybody in the head and that, would, that was the shit, you know? Right. And Bruce Lee actually worked on a lot of like more effective things like leg kicks and short range techniques, sure. Wing Chun and boxing punches and stuff like that. But he really wasn't aware about grappling until he hooked up with Gene LaBelle. Okay. But that's not true. <laughs> so let's talk about Bruce Lee's real judo teachers who taught him about grappling years before he ever met judo Gene LaBelle. So my last video on Bruce Lee, I talked about how Judo Jean LaBelle pretty much saved Bruce Lee's career. And people started asking me to talk more on Bruce Lee's Judo training. Who was his real teacher? And when did he start learning? How long did he study? Well, first thing, we really can't say when Bruce Lee actually started learning about grappling. Bruce started out going to Tai Chi class in the park with his father. And Tai Chi is actually a grappling art. Now, some internal Kung Fu people like to bring up how Tai Chi was Bruce's first art, but we can't really say that because Bruce was like six years old following his dad to Tai Chi class, and little kids just aren't going to find much of an interest in Tai Chi Chuen. The other reason we can't definitively say when and where Bruce first started learning grappling is because well, Wing Chun has grappling in the curriculum too. Wing Chun, like a lot of Chinese styles, really is a bit of a mixed martial art because it has punching, kicking, and grappling. If you look at Bruce Lee training with Taki Kimura, well, you see him sweeping Taki and taking him down, and that's not Jeet Kune Do. That's straight up Wing Chun that he's doing. Bruce Lee didn't get through the entire Wing Chun curriculum, which is one reason why he created Jeet Kune Do. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We're talking strictly about Judo and grappling in this video. So that brings us to the question of how Bruce started learning Judo and who taught him. Hey man, shout out to John Bullcaster who waved the BS flag when I said that Bruce started learning Judo in 1960. And John, hey man, you get your flowers. You can take a bow because I was actually incorrect. Bruce Lee started learning judo in 1959 on the very same day that he met his friend and first student, Jesse Glover. Now how Jesse Glover came to meet Bruce deserves its own video because the story is really interesting. So I might do it when I start my series debunking all the stuff from Dragon the Bruce Lee story. But to keep things simple for this video, Jesse Glover had about three years of judo before he even met Bruce Lee. Now if you heard the interview with Ted Little on the Kung Fu Genius podcast, Ted said that whenever Bruce met someone that said that they train any kind of martial art, Bruce's response was always, well, show me. You recognize that he was like the Missouri of martial arts. It was show me. The first private lesson between Bruce and Jesse Glover was at Jesse's house. Bruce asked Jesse if he trained anything, and Jesse said he did a little boxing in the Air Force and some judo. Bruce, in form, responded with, well, show me. And Jesse performed his favorite throw, Osotogari. Bruce didn't provide any resistance at all to the technique and his head narrowly missed a sharp corner of Jesse's bed. Now that first group of guys training with Bruce in Seattle, they didn't exactly have a student teacher relationship. Like I've said in some other videos, Bruce saw himself more in the role of big brother and these were his friends and training partners. Bruce was teaching them by really testing his stuff against theirs. Jesse and Bruce trained together for about three years before Bruce started more of an official school with what might be considered the second wave of Seattle students. But while Bruce and Jesse were training together, Jesse showed Bruce several judo techniques that Bruce began to play around with in his personal practice. Now something that gets overlooked when it comes to Jesse was that, well, he was a judo brown belt when he met Bruce Lee. He'd started to compete in tournaments and from 1959 and 1962, he only lost a handful of matches and they were all to black belts. Bruce attended all of Jesse's matches in Seattle during that period and Bruce would eventually be introduced to Jesse Glover's teacher, Fred Sato. If anyone could call themselves Bruce Lee's official judo teacher, it would have been Fred Sato. 
Fred Sato taught a judo class at the University of Washington, and Bruce Lee's college transcript shows that Bruce was enrolled in Sato's class. If we assume that Bruce took a judo elective every semester and he was enrolled up to about his junior year, then Bruce had a little less than three years of formal judo training in a class setting. Now, Bruce also trained at Sato's house on Sunday evenings, and they continued to remain close even after Bruce left Seattle. Bruce continued to write and exchange ideas with Sato while he was working on the Green Hornet, and the letters show that some of the ideas Bruce exchanged with Sato would become some of the ideas that were fundamental to Jeet Kune Do philosophy. The Seattle years came to a close when Bruce Lee moved to Oakland in 1964, where he was living with his friend and student, Jay Lee. It was in Oakland that Bruce would meet Wally J of Small Circle Jiu Jitsu fame. Wally J met Bruce Lee through a student who was actually Bruce Lee's cha-cha dance instructor. Wally J says that he was blown away with Bruce's speed and quickness, and although he was 44 at the time that he met a 24 or 25 year old Bruce Lee, he viewed him as a peer. Wally J and his son Leon both say that they shared more of a friendship where the two of them exchanged ideas and that there was never any kind of student teacher relationship. He knew Wally J who was a Jiu Jitsu guy and Wally J will tell you, well he would tell you if he was alive, that you couldn't do anything with Bruce. He was just too fast. Now what Bruce did take from his exchanges with Wally J sounds like a lot of joint manipulation or what would be considered Chin Na in Chinese martial arts. When Bruce came to Wally J, he was already familiar with lots of throws in judo, but arm bars and various other kinds of holds weren't part of his repertoire at that time. Now, this is something that I just realized, but the reason that we're even talking about Bruce Lee to this day is because of his involvement with judo. Bruce's student, James Lee, is a person who connects Jesse Glover and Wally J to Bruce Lee. And if Bruce hadn't met Jesse Glover, he might not have known about James Lee. If he'd never gone to Oakland to live with James Lee, he wouldn't have met Wally J. Now I've said in multiple videos how Bruce was basically discovered at Wally J's luau. He hit Bob Baker with the one inch punch. Ed Parker invited him to present at the first Long Beach International Karate Championship. And it was there that he was spotted by Jay Sebring. And that eventually landed him the role as Kato in the Green Hornet. So back to that last video about Bruce Lee and Judo Jean LaBelle. Bruce worked with Judo Jean to learn how to bring martial arts to TV and to the big screen in a way that worked for the camera and without hurting his fellow stunt performers. Now, one thing that I didn't mention in that video was that even after they finished with the Green Hornet, Bruce continued to train with Judo Jean LaBelle for about a year. And Jean eventually awarded Bruce with the rank of Shodan or a first degree black belt. Now, as far as what Bruce actually learned from Jean LaBelle, well, Jean LaBelle said it himself. He said he showed him some legitimate finishing holes, legs, leg locks and arm locks. Gene said that Bruce told him that he used the hold that he learned from him on Chuck Norris in Way of the Dragon. So contrary to what Joe Rogan has been saying, Bruce obviously knew something about grappling before meeting Gene LaBelle. He got introduced to judo by his first student, Jesse Glover. He studied with Jesse's teacher, Fred Sato, and then he practiced judo and grappling with Wally J while he was living in Oakland. So, I mean, can we say that Gene LaBelle put the capstone on Bruce's judo training? Like he trained with all those other guys, but maybe it was Gene LaBelle who completed his training. Well, the thing is, is, I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, think about this. Bruce Lee is in Los Angeles trying to evolve as an actor, a stunt performer, and a martial artist. He can't go all the way to Seattle or to Oakland and train with any of the other guys that I've already mentioned. If Bruce has this continued interest in judo, well, I mean, it only makes sense to train with Gene LaBelle. That's a person who can help him in all three of those areas as an actor, a stunt performer, and as a martial artist. Now, what I'm saying is that Bruce had the opportunity to not only learn as a martial artist, but he also had the opportunity to network in Hollywood. I mean, sometimes it really is about who you know and not what you know. And as far as martial arts goes, well, Bruce didn't even stop his judo training with Gene LaBelle. See, in 1967, Bruce met Haywood Nishioka at the Office of Black Belt Magazine right after Nishioka won a gold medal at the Pan American Judo Championships. And Haywood Nishioka was also a two-time national champion, and he would eventually win six consecutive national championships from 1965 to 1970. Now, by this time, Bruce was established in Los Angeles, and he was teaching the Los Angeles Jeet Kune Do group at their Chinatown location. 
Bruce invited Nishioka into the group and they would meet about once a month either at the Chinatown school or at Bruce's house. And Nishioka says that they sparred together regularly and although Bruce had no ground game, he was very good at everything else. That's why he knew all of the techniques of judo. He knew what an osotagari was, he knew what a ippon seonage was, he would name them. And uh, he was quite good at the entries. I do know this, that he wasn't good on groundwork and if he had gone into groundwork, uh, he would have lost. The one thing that I thought was interesting is that Nishioka said that Bruce was too fast for all of those guys who won those point sparring championships. You know, the guys who would later go on to talk smack about how Bruce Lee wasn't a fighter. Y'all know who he's talking about. So this just goes to show that even when Bruce was off developing JKD and trying to get a bigger foot in the door with the Hollywood executives, he made sure to train regularly with a high level judo player. Like I said, judo made a lasting impact on Bruce Lee and Jeet Kundo. And according to Jesse Glover, the five ways of attack were taught to Bruce Lee by Fred Sato. And if you look at Bruce's letters to Sato, Bruce is discussing an idea that would eventually become the five ways of attack. Also, Bruce said in an interview that he wanted Brandon's first martial art to be judo. And unfortunately, well, Bruce wasn't around to raise his son as he hoped. But I think it says a lot about how Bruce viewed the importance of the skills that he believed people could learn from the study of judo. So as you see, Bruce didn't go around thinking that he could kick people in the head or that he knew nothing about grappling. I mean, at one time, Bruce felt like judo was the closest thing someone could train to real fighting. Now I know the Bruce Lee super fans are gonna feel like, oh, Bruce Lee, he was so amazing. He mixed judo with Wing Chun and boxing. He was surely ahead of his time. And I'm not sure how to turn this idea into a video, but there were actually Kung Fu guys doing the same thing 20 years before Bruce Lee was born. But unless you're just a straight up Kung Fu geek like me, well, most people really don't know too much about what was happening on the mainland in China back then. So while Bruce Lee wasn't necessarily ahead of his time, what he did do was bring bring some of these ideas other people had into the forefront. Like a lot of this stuff other people were doing, I wouldn't have known about were it not for Bruce Lee. So I feel like he deserves his praise for helping introduce a lot of this stuff to the masses. And since we're talking about Bruce Lee introducing all of this stuff about Kung Fu to the masses, hey, be sure to check out this video on how Bruce Lee started his Wing Chun training and then why it men had to stop teaching Bruce. And also, if you haven't already seen the video on how Judo Jean LaBelle actually saved Bruce's career, yo, make sure to check out that video too. And while you wait on my next video, I hope that you'll keep training, remember to breathe, and I'll see you on the next video.